All right, everyone, welcome to our Patho for Nurses series. I'm Scott Kruger, and today we're gonna to be going over ways to interpret arterial blood gases, AVGs. So one of the first things that we definitely wanna consider when interpreting AVGs, first thing we wanna look at pH. And it's important to realize that our normal pH, 7.35 to 7.45, when we're above 7.45, that is going to put us into alkalosis. And we associate alkalosis with uh, terms like base, terms like base. When we're below 7.35, we are moving towards acidosis. The second thing that we wanna look at when interpreting ABG is the PaCO2. And it's important to recognize that we have the gas CO2 in this carbon dioxide is considered an acid. So the normal value of that, 35 to 45, it's important to recognize that when there is an issue within this system, it is correlated with the lungs. Lastly, we have our HCO3, uh, normal of that, 22 to 26. This is looking at the metabolic issue when there is an issue with our HCO3, it typically has to do with our kidneys are trying to compensate or they're not able to compensate. So then you're gonna see a shift in the pH with that. So um, with our HCO3, it's important to recognize that our kidneys are able to modify our pH by either holding on to hydrogen ions or releasing hydrogen ions. And similar to CO2, hydrogen ions are considered an acid. Uh, but then HCO3 is considered a bicarb. So that's part of the buffer system that can allow the kidneys to uh, adjust the pH level. So one of the first things that we want to consider when interpreting this, you look at the pH first, we look at the PaCO2 second, and we have the number two right there, so you can remember that. And then we look at the HCO3 lastly. So this is kind of a method. Some people like to use the Rome method. Uh, they're looking at opposites there. Some people like to use the tic-tac-toe method. I came upon this method here um, with simple nursing, and they called it the marching band method. Um, and I think it's easier to just think about it as the Abba Bob method. So what that means is we put an A above here. So we got an A on this side, and that lets us know that if we are moving towards 7.35, that is towards acid, acidosis. We put a B over here. When we're above 7.45, we'll call that a base. Now this is where things get a little tricky. This right here, when we're below 35 on our PaCO2, that is moving towards base. That's moving towards a base. And then over here, when we're above 45, that is moving toward, that's acidic. That'll be considered acidic. And then lastly, down here, when we're below 22, that's going to move us towards acidosis. And then over here, when we're above 26, that is a base. So the ABBAB method. If you can remember these numbers, and then remember ABBA, BAB, ABBAB. Um, I think that's a lot easier than trying to switch things in your head with the Rome method. This will really allow you to interpret those ABGs a lot more consistently if you don't have to switch things around. So let's give an example here. If we have a pH of 7.32, a PaCO2 of 50, and then an HCO3 of 24. The first thing you wanna look at here, we are below 7.35, so 
So we'll call that an acid, acidosis. So right away, pH, first thing we look at. Secondly, PaCO2, we see we're above 50. That is towards an acid. So what you wanna do here with the pH, once you determine whether it's an acid or a base, you want to match it up. You wanna match up the A with an A or B with a B. If the PaCO2 is normal, we can move on to the HCO3. So if PaCO2 is normal, we will move on to here, HCO3, and match up that. And then that will allow us to see that this is respiratory acidosis. Because whenever the PaCO2 is off and the HCO3 is normal, we see that we have a respiratory issue. And this gets a little tricky when we move into partial compensation or full compensation, but I definitely wanna talk a little bit about more respiratory acidosis. So uh, some of the causes for respiratory acidosis, slow, shallow respirations, that can be seen in people who have had a drug overdose or people who have some kind of lung issue where there is congestion. The compensation for this is that the kidneys will excrete more hydrogen ions and then reabsorb more bicarb. Some of the laboratory values that we associate with respiratory acidosis, elevated P, PaCO2, elevated serum bicarb, and then when we're compensated, we'll move into that a bit later. But it's important to consider right in the middle here, 7.4. Uh, when we move into fully compensation, we have to know whether it's more towards an acid or more towards a base. But when you're fully compensated, the pH will actually be within the normal limits. But then maybe both of these might be off because we've seen that there's been a comp uh, compensation for that. All right, let's look at another example here. Let's say our pH is 7.5, pH 7.5. We have our PaCO2 that is 30, and then bicarb is 23. So like I said, first thing, look at the pH. We see that it's above 7.45. That tells us that it's basic, alkalosis. So it's alkalosis. We match that up with the, um, the one that is also off. So we see here that the PaCO2 is off, it's 30, it's under 35, that is a base. We see that the B matches with the B. So right away we can see that it's respiratory alkalosis. And some of the causes for respiratory alkalosis, we have hyperventilation, which could, could be due to some kind of anxiety, uh, possibly an aspirin overdose. Uh, you may see people get super anxious like on an airplane or something. So what is going on here? Their PaCO2 is low. When you're hyperventilating, you're releasing too much carbon dioxide and that's what brings your levels down. So good intervention for someone who's hyperventilating. You know, we can try and calm them down, give them a sedative. We can have them breathing into a paper bag. When you're breathing into a paper bag, that allows you to rebreathe in the CO2 that you've been exhaling with your fast respirations. So some of the compensation that can go on with respiratory alkalosis, the kidneys excrete less hydrogen ions and then they reabsorb less bicarb. Some of the laboratory values you'll see associated with respiratory alkalosis obviously our low PaCO2. Um, and then when we are compensating, if, if we have fully compensated, usually it's a bit more in this range. So fully compensated, you're back within your normal pH range, and then both of these lab values will be off. So when you're fully compensated, you're within that normal range. That's important to know. And then based on whether it is, so let's say that the pH is 7.44. 
the compensation for respiratory alkalosis will be to reabsorb less HCO3. So that may look like you may have an HCO3 of 20, you'll have a PaCO2 of 30, and then um, if our pH is 7.44, we see that we are within the normal range, it is compensated. Uh, so our kidneys were able to help us bring our pH back to a normal level, um, but then, like I said, these two values will still be off. Uh, looking at some of the metabolic issues here, So when we're looking at metabolic, usually the HCO3 will be off. So let's say that we have a pH of 7.29, the PaCO2 is 40, and then our HCO3 is 19. 19. So first thing you look at, we have, alkalo we have acidosis here. This is an acid. PaCO2 is normal. And then HCO3, we see we have an A here, acid. We match it up here with that acid. So we have metabolic acidosis. And with metabolic acidosis, some of the causes of it could be shock, diabetic ketoacidosis, renal failure, or diarrhea. Our last one that we wanna look at here Last one we want to look at here, we want to, let's say we have a pH of 7.55, 7.55, PaCO2 is 39, and then our HCO3, 30, 30. So here we see that we are towards alkalosis, that's a B, right, that's a base, we got B there, PaCO2 is normal, and then HCO3, we match it up here, so B, and B. So we have metabolic alkalosis. Some of the causes of it could be vomiting in the early stage, uh, excessive antacid intake. Um, so we can see that with that, that'll raise the pH and then the HCO3 will also be off. So the compensation for that would be to have slow, shallow breath. So the compensation for that eventually the respiratory will be able to slow their breath, retain more CO2 so that we use an acid to help bring this back down to a normal value. So let's say we come back to 7.43. Now we're within the normal range. It's still a little bit towards alkalosis, but we're, we're at least within that normal range. So it is compensated, fully compensated and we were able to do that through our respiratory holding on to our CO2. So uh, I hope this was helpful. Um, definitely gonna talk a little bit more in my next video about fluid and electrolytes. So definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you so much.